many, many charismatic ministries, most of the next generation. To present three names. Who is going to be the next president of Living Faith Church? So there won't be anything you are running around for. Who and who are eligible? How will he or she emerge? What is the succession plan of the Living Faith Church? Does the current president have influence in the decision of who is going to take over from him? No prayer, no nothing. And no process, only between you and your son. That's not like Divine process. If God picks that son, it may not be the first, it may not be the second. Maybe the other or the fourth. But it's not a uh, family in Welcome. Welcome to today's analysis as we look at the mandate of the Winners Chapel and I think it's very very important we get to discuss this. For those who are interested in this particular conversation, most especially for those who have been following our previous conversations before now, I'm giving you a very important update especially if you are members of Winners and you are confused as to what is going on. This is what is going on right now. Remember in my last video I said that Isaac Oyedepo, maybe he is still the national youth pastor of Winners Chapel. Apparently, it begins to make sense that the interview that they had or which was used as a premise for saying that he had left the ministry, the person that was interviewing them is actually now the national youth pastor. What a coincidence. So Isaac Oyedepo himself is not the national youth pastor as we speak. So it's either he rejected that particular position or he stepped down from that position to let um, Steve Oga himself become the person that is in charge. That might be the reason why it is insinuated or it is stated that he has left the ministry because if you are given a position like this and then you don't take it, probably it might be looking as if you have other things that are more um, pertinent to you than handling that particular position in the ministry. Note, he is a pastor in the ministry and if he is running something else that is probably a little bit outside of the ministry based on what he does in the campuses and his you know hunger for the generation and all that probably his post recently where he was talking about the fact that nothing is happening and there is no complications is true but but with him not being the national youth pastor and then Stephen Oga, who is actually his in-law in a way, is a national youth pastor, then it begins to make sense why that particular insinuation does exist. So before we get into the main detail of this video, I just thought to give you this particular update so you know what is the current stand right now. So it makes sense why that is being said about his person, but they know what is happening is an idea internal affair. I am discussing what is made public for us to understand. So I believe you understand what I'm talking about right now. And let's get on with the video at the moment. If you watched the video before this one, I believe you learned a lot from there and got to understand your church better as we look at um, this particular segment. So in this video, let me just play some snippet of it as well, where the bishop himself talked about the mandate and the succession plan of his ministry. Now we have seen that many in recent times, many ministries um, that have had their GOs late, that either the wife gets the wife gets to take over from the ministry as the geo or maybe the son gets to take over from the ministry as a geo or maybe someone that is in the family okay now it happens that maybe it is the church structure of that particular organization for that to be like that and sometimes it happens to be that that is what the people themselves want because of course i cannot come and tell you this particular ministry this is how you are supposed to work no if the people themselves say we want the son to take over of course that is what it should be so i don't get to come into saying that oh what this particular ministry is doing is right or wrong he can say that ministries that are established for the sole purpose of handing over to their children like enterprises that are wrong that they don't allow arrival if and all that becomes your personal property you have lost it it becomes a family property is dead many charismatic churches die before their founders die why they own it it's an enterprise to them what cost jesus his life he can say that because he is a bishop, he is recognized, he is people that, or he's one of those that is being seen as an example 
I cannot say who am I. You just see me here as a commentator. So no matter how much you hate me, please don't hate our dear bishop for being the one to say that some of your ministries, the ones that are definitely going to hand over to their children or to their family or to their wife, that it is it is dead on arrival or it is wrong or something. Don't don't hate him for that. That is what he believes in based on scripture. So we are, we are going to look at his statement based on the winner's chapels um organogram as to how they get to have their succession plan and i got to read the book the ban the mandate and i got to find out where um what what he was saying in this particular part if you read the book the mandate you see the succession procedure of apostleship in this ministry open is in the hand of everybody amen when you are 70 as leader of this church you will present three names to the council of priests for them to see if any of them is qualified by the same criteria. They are not qualified. Throw it back to you. Have one more chance to make another presentation. And after that, you are out of it. The council takes it. The board goes to ratify. It's a process. Not that somebody died and then we don't know what to do. You know what to do step by step. And this happens within three weeks. This takes me between 12 weeks. It's stated. God is counting to determine where next to where it comes from so right now you're going to be listening to me looking and reading that particular document to you while i show you the document so let's begin every apostolic ministry like us is a priestly commission and because priesthood is for a lifetime the presidency in this commission shall therefore be for a lifetime we are going to understand this as we go on the head of an apostolic ministry can be linked to the high priest after the order of Christ, who is our eternal high priest. The following examples in scripture validate this. So he gives a couple of examples based on the person of Moses, Joshua, Aaron, Elijah, Elisha, and Paul. Then, of course, includes others. Now, from all the above, priesthood in scripture was clearly a lifetime phenomenon. Moses was there until his departure at 120. Joshua was also there until his departure at 110. Aaron ministered before the Lord and his son Eleazar only took over at his departure. Now this is more of like the son situation. The main focus here is about the lifetime. Elijah operated as a flame of fire until he was carried to the great beyond through a casket of fire from heaven. Elijah retained his impact until his death. Paul, the aged, finished his course as an active soldier of Christ until he drew his last breath. The exception we have to this were the cases where divine judgment led to termination of priesthood. Those are the scriptures there on your screen for you to note. Now, it should however be noted that in each of the examples referred to in scriptures, the priesthood had competent spiritual and administrative support around them to sustain their mandate. The following cases are examples. So in the case of Moses, and in the case of Christ, we have the 12 apostles who are the apostolic pillars. The priesthood is probed at all times, even as one can observe with Catholic Church. You know, Bishop Oyedepo has a very strong admiration for the Catholic Church. This is what he said about the church one time ago in the past. Well, in my own view, the Catholic have done a good job in terms of structure. An extremely good job. Amazing good job. Where you can sit down and pull out materials of 650 years ago. My God. In its original form. How many of us in ministry today can pull out things of 10 years? It's known to be the longest organized system on the earth. Over 2,000 years in existence. And then came the major protestants, the Church of England. They made a good deal of organization. Good deal of it. If you keep going like this, not one thing betrays to the charismatic in life. If you keep going like we're going, without uh, reviewing our steps, without seeing the place of order, it will face you out straight. Because many are running like a show. You make sales on Sunday, you spend it during the week, and they come back for the next market day. That's not life. 
So I took time to study the Catholic system. Therefore, the presidency in this commission shall be provided with adequate administrative and spiritual support that will keep the mandate flying from generation to generation till Jesus comes. And now I begin to understand his stance on the fact that ministry itself is not like a family affair, especially his own ministry, or would I say the winner's chapel. But it's one thing to say this and it's another thing to also look at the reality of what happens. Going on here, the reason for life presidency is based on the following. Number one, to perpetuate the tradition or culture of the commission into the coming generation. Number two, for stability of the administrative structure. Number three, to guarantee consistency of the message from generation to generation. It is the biblical order of apostolic ministry and number five to secure the flow of apostolic unction that's a reason for a lifetime tenure even though presidency shall be for a lifetime the following process shall be followed for the emergence of a new president number one when a president chooses to vacate or be relieved of his office based on personal physical health or social reasons he shall after consultation with the executive council file a notice to the board of trustees signifying intention to step down from office such notice shall be given not shorter than one year to the time of the proposed exit note again number three the board of trustees shall be expected to indicate approval or otherwise of his notification not later than three months upon the receipt of the application and subsequently number four the sitting president shall submit the name of his nominee into the office of the president in to the board of trustees so he has to submit a name when you are 70, as leader of this church, you will present three names to the council of priests. Of his nominee. Now, continuing right here, the presidency is in this commission is an apostolic office and the apostle shall be required to seek the face of God for a successor. Should there be any objection, there must be a cogent and proven reason this is however without prejudice in the eligibility procedure for the emergence of a new president now should the choice after due spiritual consideration not be accepted the existing president will be given a second chance to nominate another candidate within three weeks of rejection of the earlier nomination so there is a format that's why you see him stressing in the video that it's not a family affair you know so you can nominate one and then that person can be rejected and then you have to nominate another person again so it is not a clear path to be more of like okay it's gonna be for his sons or something it could be any other person all this hand over to your son hand over to your daughter is no ministry it's not it's not <laughs> it's not it's not it's not ministry no prayer no nothing and no process only between you and your son that's not life they find a process if god picks that son it may not be the first it may not be the second maybe the third or the fourth but it's not a uh, family inheritance it's not a uh, chief in your, your, your process. religious process in the spirit if the man gets it it will still be subject to vetting of the body responsible Hello. You're quiet, man. Moving on right here, the board of trustees shall be expected to complete screening in the four weeks that follow after the new person has been submitted. Now, where the second nominee is rejected, the board of trustees shall, in conjunction with the executive council, take full spiritual responsibility for the installation of a new president that is when the second person is rejected so it's now their responsibility and whenever an incumbent president has attained the age of 75 and has not signified withdrawal intention with by reason of strength 
he shall be expected to identify a successor, the appointment of which shall follow the established screening process above. So, when, for example, the president right now is Bishop David Oyedepo, at the age of 75, when he has not declared intentions of, you know, um, stepping down or something, at that time he is supposed to have signified a successor identify the successor now it might be public it might be private i don't know that term but at least based on this particular document available to everyone who is a member of the church in case you don't know about it of course i can help you get it yourself this is also a necessary procedure so that in case like what happened to the dukoya family you see with that particular story you see that even after he departed when the church board of trustees were talking about how the son emerged remember the father had spoken to some board of trustees that he should take over even though he didn't speak to them as uh, as a group but differently so even when they also went through the election process coincidentally you know he still emerged from the election even though that was the wish of the father as well where his nominee passes the screening if not a member of the executive council, he shall be grafted into the council and deployed to the office of the president for special duties. That means that whoever is being nominated to become the next president should have been part of the executive council. Stand. That is how I'm seeing it here, except maybe I'm giving a wrong interpretation. I don't know. But it's a public document that can be understood by anyone. Now, in the event of a sudden exit of an incumbent president before age of 75, the Board of Trust Trustees shall take full responsibility of appointing a new president drawn from two nominations submitted by the Executive Council. You know what the exit in this particular point means? Vice presidency in this structure is tenured because it is of a levitical order and shall have a seven-year tenure renewable not more than once who is the current vice president right now remember david abioye so a new president shall not be more than 60 years of age at the time of installation so whoever becomes the president of the ministry anytime in the future must not be older than 60 years old define the age limit because we need energy to drive yes particularly all these big big ministries that are rising yeah. you need the energy to drive energy to drive don't get an 80 year old person to come and drive a trailer no 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 you will sleep off <laughs> Define the terms of eligibility. So there won't be anything you are running around for. Who and who are eligible? What must they possess for the eligibility? What is the process for the you understand? Budget? Of course, right now the current vice president is older, and whoever it has to be must not be older than 60 years old. Doesn't mean it has to be his own son. Anything is possible, but of course just to give you a ground idea on that exemption clause now the incumbent first president steps in automatically to serve as the acting president while exercising the full powers of the president upon confirmation by the board of trustees and ratification by the advisory board he emerges as a new president to complete the current tenure of the exited president Completing the tenure of someone else where the particular position itself is a lifetime position, it becomes a little bit, you know, problematic there. But I wouldn't say I understand better. I'm just giving my two cents about what I'm reading. All processes leading to the installation of a new president must be completed within four weeks from the time of the exit of the incumbent. The new president shall take on full responsibility of presidency excluding the nomination of a successor since he could be eligible as a candidate. The board of trustees take responsibility for the nomination of a successor 
in the event that the incumbent first president is not confirmed as president-elect, then the board of trustees will undertake the spiritual role of the president in identifying a candidate. In this case, the board of trustees shall revert to the procedures for the emergence of a new president. In all cases, the procedure hereby specified shall remain protected from any form of politicking until Jesus comes. So there should be no politicizing like you know how politics is done. Because the church shall remain the indivisible universal body of Christ, tongues, race or color notwithstanding. But this particular last exemption is most important. By implication, therefore, the president of this church can emerge from any part of the world as long as the prescribed biblical standards above are upheld, but the international headquarters remains domiciled in Nigeria, no matter what. Okay, I added them up. I am the one adding there no matter what. Now, by the way, if you want to access this particular document, I have the link to where you can download it free of charge. Some people, some places say you have to buy it, but no, I have a link where you can download it free of charge. I hope, let me also say this, I hope probably the one he's talking about is the updated version because I saw some disparity with what he's saying with what I found in the document. Or maybe I'm reading from the wrong page, but I think I was on the right page with respect to what he was talking about the succession plan. So let me look at that as well clearly here so we have a better understanding of what is going on. So he talked about the age 70. Now I don't see anywhere in the document where it talks about like you could see yourself age 70 is actually age 75. Do you understand? Also looking at that particular document you saw something very interesting there that even though in the video he talks about nominate three people it actually has to be a nominee name of a nominee except right now it is name of nominees so the president like he is a president has to nominate somebody to uh, become the next president and present that to the council or would i say the board of trustees for them to decide if they don't pick the person he, he can also get to do a second time again and after the second time he said three times after the second time as well if there is no fruitful um arrival at a decision then the board of trustees themselves would now be vested with that particular responsibility but of course there is a clear organogram which i respect him for making it even public for the people themselves to understand what is happening now you may not know what happened behind the scenes for the emergence of the person that becomes the head or would i say the president in the future but you know the process that goes into that and if you read like i was saying here and like i was saying in the video as well from the document there is no room for politicking so it's not as if there is politics happening oh vote for me oh vote for me that can happen when it comes to like we're looking at the pastor of obomosho the pastor who went from being a pastor in redeem to being um a, 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 a king or would i say you know we talked about him right very good it's not about that because even right now there's actually a case with him and the court had decided that you know his enthronement should be held because there's actually a politicking going on right there with him being the king of obomosho based on the fact that um the there's another rival person that thinks that he's the one that's supposed to be and the pastor himself should not actually be the king but if you are following the story you know about the pastor who has left the ministry already resigned and now if he's being rejected as a king i wonder what would happen with respect to if he's going to go back to church to be a preacher because he has left the church handed over and gone back to bomosho to become the king so you could tell me what you know about that if you know the update of this particular story about um the pastor who has moved from being a pastor to more of like a traditionalist and being a king as well which you understand what entails in that but that's not the main subject of today's discussion you see that bishop oyedepo also talked about the idea of 
you know the succession plan that is very clear so not as if someone dies tomorrow people are going to be running helter skelter and if you look at the document there it says that once you get up to the age of 75 and you have not declared your intention to get to hand over it's very important that you get to while you are still there submit you know someone that you want to take over from you so and the person if the person is not in the council which of course the person that should be emerging as the next president is not going to be just a random person that will be picked from the church oh you are the next person to lead no the person must have been in the system and also being part of the council from the way i'm looking at the document to be able to be eligible to be the next president so if the person has not been in the council then while the person has been nominated the person will not get to be in the presidential special duties or something but i don't know if these particular positions are going to be made public so that people will know or maybe they in the council just knows what is happening and tomorrow they just have to report to the members of course of what is going on but should you be even caring about this as a member you are not going to church for the pastor or you're not going to church for the name you are going to church because you are going there to worship god so probably you shouldn't care about these things but some people do care as well and of course i think as a member of a church you should understand what is going on so that you will not be you know backbiting when some things happen tomorrow now of course for you to be a president you cannot be older than 60 60 is the cap so you must be younger than 60 so when he talks about the age you know you, you don't just hand over to someone that is an elderly or something that cannot drive the wheels the person has to be also young 60 is a cap so younger than 60 can be the next president so don't think about bishop david abioye they're almost like different age difference as well so the person that would come to be president tomorrow or any time in the future has to be younger than 60 years so please you know that so that tomorrow if anything happens as well you have this particular facts to look at whoever emerges to be the president now hopefully they get to implement what he's telling them because they are all covenant sons or would i say that is covenant brothers but understanding where he's coming from as well you as the members are supposed to even be more wiser so not a family business are supposed to even be more wiser okay so if his children are leaving if if isaac himself is leaving to start up his own ministry or to do what god has called him you have to understand that from the words from our last video he did not call the sons themselves to become pastors they decided based on them hearing from god to become pastors and it's not a fact that the son or any of the son is going to take over from him as being the you know the general of Asia tomorrow i'm not saying this thinking of uh, him going beyond tomorrow no even he himself said it that none of them are going to live forever of course we are not going to live forever if you be if you are in part of a church i believe that you are immortal don't worry don't worry don't worry when it dawns on you you will not even know by that time you just be like oh i don't go okay let me be going to heaven or wherever else you are signed up to be in but do you understand because there are churches like that that believe that they are immortal that's why they don't get to announce when people die in the church or something when it comes to death they don't even talk about it. in fact they don't even go for burial but people are going great and beyond in the church but it's not part of the conversations that happens you know those you know those churches but let me not go there but the point of this video right now is for you to know that just like isaac oedipo has left right now you will not even imagine tomorrow that Isaac himself is going to be the one to succeed the father or would I say to 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 become the next general of Asia because he has shattered the course for himself based on his own calling now we understand also when it comes to um David himself David Oedipo Jr he's still in the ministry uh, as well uh, we are not thinking tomorrow he's going to leave no of, of course you are not thinking tomorrow he's going to leave he's the first son and I, I don't want to go traditional or cultural right now but whatever the case may be just know that bishop oedipo himself is against any form of established family succession if, even if it happens that the son or a family member succeeds whether it's even the in-law the person married to the daughter the person has to go through the process of the vetting or would i say the board of trustees 
so he has to nominate one person i don't know if it's different from maybe there's an updated document that he has to nominate three people he said three names probably he's talking about three times not three names but either ways what i see in the document is name of a nominee you understand so he knows who he would want to be the next general overseer 